Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to BSV TV. I'm your host, Sir Toshi, and on this show, we'll be defending the one and only truly genuine Bitcoin. The Bitcoin that Satoshi Nakamoto designed in his white paper as a peer to peer electronic cash system for the world. Let's get the disclaimers out of the way. So all the statements that you hear on this show are opinion and must only ever be taken as opinion. They are never to be taken as any form of advice, family, financial, sexual or otherwise. And on that note, let's sit back, relax, have some fun and enjoy the show. Get paid for your content in Bitcoin and set your own fee on Streamanity. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I wasn't asked why I'm convinced. Craig is Satoshi. Um, I posted on, on Reddit, he signed in my presence uh, the private, using the private key from block one, block number one, the very first mined Bitcoin block uh, on a computer that I'm convinced had not been tampered with, on software I'm convinced that had not been tampered with, a message of my choosing. At Enchain, we've just funded a number of universities doing, so far, a test up to one gigabyte because it validates what we've already done independently. We've tested up to 380 gigabyte blocks. We have tested 1 million transactions a second and transaction sizes up to 20 megabytes. Super complex scripts, basically ones that can run operating systems. That's all of global commerce times about 50. On top of that, we can have complex scripts. On top of that, we can scale each of those transactions 1000 times, which effectively means about a billion transactions per second, which means we can then have all derivatives, all complex trades. That means high frequency trading. It means everything that happens globally. Is the market that effectively BSV is going for, is that global e-commerce, which is currently valued at $29 trillion? No, that's too small. Buy and sell Bitcoin instantly at bsvgravity.com. And you can now book and pay for your winter holiday at skibsv.com. Good afternoon, everybody. It looks like we are live. We're just coming up to uh, 20 past six, or actually past 20 past six, on, uh, on Thursday, the 5th of August, 2021. Let's be gone and jump straight into what is going on. Oh my goodness me, never a dull moment here. I mean, let's just have a look at this. Bearing in mind, uh, yesterday we had the largest 51% attack in history on the uh, Bitcoin network. They must have spent multiple millions of dollars trying to attack the network. And now we are back on track. Look at the size of these blocks coming through. I mean, I know this is a new technology and we've never seen this before, but I mean, this is insane. Look, we've got two 400, well, 400 plus megabyte blocks. In fact, there's a 499.6, almost a 500 megabyte block um, in this column. M the majority of them are 255 megabytes. I mean, this is just absolutely staggering. Whew. My goodness me. Uh, we're already uh, reaching new all-time highs in terms of... Uh, Daily average Bitcoin block size by network. We'll have a look at this quickly on the um, monthly chart. Well, three month chart is what probably uh, uh, outlines it the best. Look at this three month. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my goodness me. So we've now got a new record of uh, 92, 92 megabytes on average per block in a 24 hour period. I mean, this is just absolutely, absolutely staggering. You know, I mean, I'm sort of overwhelmed with uh, emotion, uh, you know, positive emotion. But at the same time, there's just that the kind of like adrenaline that you're feeling watching it, knowing that the world is literally about to change. And literally, you know, uh, and we we almost like sat on top of this rocket ship. Like, whoa, I mean, it's one it's one thing to uh, predict it and understand it. It's another thing. It's another thing to actually be strapped in and start riding it and watching this thing going. My goodness. Like, whoa. And these these shit coiners literally have no idea. They have no idea what's coming. They spent all day looking at price going up and down, up and down. And they've just not bothered to look under the bonnet you know, to see to see what's coming. Man, well, what can you say? It's not like I haven't tried to educate them and all that. You know, shit corners, shit for brains, unfortunately. Look at this. So the chain is now 132 gigabytes in front. 
Jeepers, it was like um, uh, 127 this morning. So it's already gone up almost six gigabytes. Almost six gigabytes uh, in, in one afternoon. <sighs> Jeepers. Jeepers. I mean, what? So that's got to be maybe, what, 12 gigabytes in? Maybe even more than that. So um, if we're already 132 uh, gigabytes in front and the um the the btc chain is only 363 uh gigabytes let's do a little bit of quick calculation here Whew. let's figure this out get the old calculator out um whew. what did i do so we're only 230 uh gigabytes behind so if let's say if we're uh, going up like maybe 12 gigabytes in a day divided by 12 whoa so that means we're going to be there in 20 days and, and that's and that's and that's at this current rate let alone the the rate of uh, increase that we're that we're probably likely to witness so the chain is literally going to be double the size of btc uh in the next in the next couple of weeks maybe jeepers jeepers i mean imagine what the miners are going to start doing when as we know miners <laughs> you know miners are in business to make money and they money they make money from profiting like speculating from the op from the uh the opportunity cost of the amount of energy that they're putting towards the chain so you know if you suddenly see a chain with loads of utility on it that lots of people are using you know you're gonna want that uh, and you're going to start pointing your hash rate towards it, and you might even start dumping your bags of BTC because BTC does nothing. And then literally, the house of cards will literally fall overnight. You know, uh, I'm, I'm, I know how some of these shitcoiners are going to feel. <sighs> Should I have sympathy for them? You know, I mean, <sighs> sometimes the hardest way to, the best way to learn is the hardest way, and they're so ignorant and arrogant in their attitude. Maybe they deserve it. Who knows? Who knows? But um, kind of scary, really. Well, uh, Preve in the top right of the uh, picture frame recording a price there of $150. Uh, let's just let's just check that quickly. Should we have a quick check on uh, on Bitfinex? Why not? You know, have a look at these uh, candles doing uh, upside downsies and stuff like that. Let's see what's going on. Let's see if it uh, correlates to what we're looking at on um, Coin Gecko, maybe. Oh wow! Well. So it looks like there's a ten dollar arbitrage between uh, uh, Bitfinex and and Preve. Let's just check on uh, Coin Gecko then quickly. Where are they at? 140. All right, so we'll we'll, we'll go with that one then. Jeepers! All right, well that's the uh, that's the quick down of the uh, quick rundown of the figures. Uh, staying on top of what is going on. Um, so, bit of news uh, on Twitter today is obviously we found uh, uh, evidence and pretty much proof that um, Ethereum um, is a security. <laughs> like it is, it is absolutely a uh, a security. And I've made a video. There we go. That's the uh, that's the thumbnail I used for it. I said Ethereum is a security as defined by SEC versus W J Howie Co. Good grief. You know, uh, we need to need to watch that, people. I mean, that that's been absolutely hilarious. Um, so, an update from Tal. Tal actually said here, Tal was made aware of a block reorg attack on the BSV network to illegally double spend BSV coins, with the attacker impersonating Tal using public information. While such attacks period, periodically happen, uh, uh, no direct impact to Tal or our customers resulted. Full statement uh, linked in Tal. Um, now that's pretty uh, that's quite interesting because the attacker was obviously just using their name Tal but they changed the protocol and created another chain so it was a uh, it was a hard fork um, you know so obviously the chain had no fundamental value whatsoever I mean it was a complete waste of time but they've, they've thrown all their ammunition at it everything in the kitchen sink and and that's it and it's done it's done nothing apart, apart from maybe brought more attention to uh, to, to Bitcoin so yeah, just get your popcorn ready, strap in, put your seatbelts on, people. Things are about to explode. Jeepers. So let's have a look at the news at CoinGeek. Uh, anything exciting uh, to report here? Popsicle Finance. 
Uh, export shows DeFi innovation is stagnant. Well, surprise, surprise, doesn't surprise me at all there. SEC's Gary uh, Gary Gensler, uh, consumer protection main concern despite digital currency intrigue. Uh, PayPal eyes central banks. Nano developers petition court for a 701,000 damages over a basis class action. Oof. Um, Coinbase faces class action lawsuit. Um, FinCEN's uh, uh, Mikhail Kova aims to crack down on digital currency crime. Yes, blockchain can help operators and uh, players even with uh, responsible gaming. Law experts uh, Angela Welch debunks censorship resistance claims of many uh, uh, crypto promoters. Yeah, I mean, it's just... It's just scam after scam after scam, isn't it, really? Let's have a look, see what we've got in tech. Um, Bitcoin ecosystem rallies to repel a doomed reorg attacks. All right, let's have a look at this one. So, uh, oh, Jordan Atkins, good stuff. Quite like his uh, editorials here. The articles. Right, so... Uh, the block reorganization attack on the Bitcoin SV network is ongoing, but it appears to be under control according to the latest statements from the Bitcoin Association. The statement confirms that the attacks against the Bitcoin SV network, which started in early July, wow, <clears throat> have resumed this week and are uh, perpetrated by a malicious actor attempting to illegally double spend BSV coins. The attacks work like this. A miner accumulates hash power and creates a chain of competitive, uh, competing BSV blocks um, in secret, which contain transactions written to benefit the attacker, such as by double spending BSV by appearing to deposit it into an exchange wallet. In general, uh, when two versions of the same uh, blocks are mined, the longest chain is the one accepted by the system. Therefore, if an attacker can collect enough hash power, they can create a chain that are, uh, um, at a faster rate than their honest counterparts, which will also make it the longest. When the fraudulent chain is unleashed, the chain uh, may be accepted, albeit briefly, as legitimate along with the double spend transactions. The risk is that the attackers may be able to successfully deposit um, BSV from the from the attack with an exchange and then trade those for legitimate assets before the exchange is able to confirm the deposit. This apparently happened to uh, Bitmart. It can be assumed uh, they were targeted for having a low block confirmation requirements, allowing the coins to be exchanged before the double spend could be identified. Though the attackers have made uh, repeat reorg attempts, Bitcoin Association claims that they have uh, detected three fraudulent chains so far. They are doomed to fail, uh, as demonstrated by how the system has successfully reacted to repel them over the last month. First off, the response from uh, Bitcoin SV infrastructure team was swift. After discovering the attack, they disseminated a uh, command for nodes to use to invalidate two fraudulent chains, as well as the third one currently being attempted. The command, which has uh, been a part of Bitcoin since the early days of BTC, will immediately return the node to the chain supported by honest miners, essentially freezing out the fraudulent chain. <clears throat> Secondly, the honest hash power of the network is enough to consistently repel attacks like this. It has been known for a time that there are uh, mining pools active on BSV, which are um, ostensibly ideologically opposed to it. Given that there is a, an ambient threat of a 51% attacks on any proof-of-work blockchain, it makes sense that these would have rallied to defend the BSV network in this instance. A reorg or 51% attack, even if only attempted, is uh, inconvenient for any chain to look for mass adoption. The ecosystem has rallied and the consequences are, uh, consequences are coming. Two additional general points seem important to note. First, there does not yet appear to be any evidence that individual users have suffered any loss as a result of the attacks. There seems to be some narrow scope for attackers to have double spent BSV accepted by exchanges. Secondly, though it's not clear at this stage if the latest attack has resulted in successful double spends, the course of action taken by the Bitcoin SV infrastructure team has ensured that, thanks to Bitcoin, um, uh, that it doesn't matter. As the Bitcoin white paper makes clear, invalid blocks are rejected by the system and invalid blocks are those containing invalid transactions, such as double spends. As also uh, assumed, uh, assumed in the white paper, node operators are able, uh, are able and willing to consider the fraudulent chains as invalid and have every reason to execute the invalid commands released by the Bitcoin SV camp. When they do, the double spend ceases to be part of the blockchain.
Uh, after all, uh, after all, this is how Satoshi Nakamoto expected Bitcoin to work. Honest nodes, the towels of the world, are engaged in a, uh, a common enterprise with one another. They are heavily invested in the success of the system and are therefore incentivized to cooperate uh, to identify and discard fraudulent chains. Uh, as for uh, recourse, Bitcoin Association has sent a strong message that the attackers will be brought to justice. While block reorganizations by themselves are not necessarily legal, as an organic block reorganizations are part of the Bitcoin ecosystem, an attack such as this will fall within a range of criminal and civil statutes in most jurisdictions. For example, the US Computer Frauds and Abuse Act violates violations of which are punished by uh, up to 20 years in prison. Hence, Bitcoin Association is wasting no time in filing reports with law enforcement agencies according to their statement on the subject. Ultimately, the only significant um, uh, permanent consequence of the attack is that, there now is that there now exists on the BSV blockchain an immutable evidence trail, perfectly recording the fraudsters' every move and hopefully ensuring they are brought to justice sooner rather than later. Absolutely hilarious. Listen, this is why we say shit coiners, shit for brains, there's no such th no such thing as a clever criminal, um, and that that was a really good article. That really good article. Very much enjoyed that one. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Atkins. There. Um, I think we've read all up to date with those editorials. Let's see if there's anything else. Empire Strikes Back. Yet yeah, read that one. Press releases. Ah, oh, Mr. Uh, missed this one yesterday. Let's go over this. So the BSV blockchain startup accelerator Satoshi Block Dojo opens uh, uh, opens applications for first cohort of companies. So uh, London, United Kingdom, August 4th. That was just yesterday. Satoshi Block Dojo, a London-based startup accelerator for uh, projects that leverage the BSV blockchain, would officially open its doors in London next month with applications for the first cohort of companies to enter the dojo now open at blockdojo.io. The Satoshi Block Dojo offers an intensive three-month program designed to rapidly accelerate the development and market readiness of blockchain-based businesses and products. Successful applicants will be awarded a, a £10,000 golden handshake upon entry to go, uh, to go along with business mentorship, technical guidance and a host of support services from company uh, incorporation and taxation to bookkeeping and web hosting worth £60,000. The 12-week program is split in, um, into, uh, into two six-week sprints and uh, leverages Agile and Scrum methodologies to deliver a minimum viable product by the conclusion, uh, with, uh, with successful projects eligible to receive a further £140,000 in uh, SEIS funding. Wow. Uh, the dojo is led by a team of successful business entrepreneurs and blockchain developers. Uh, Chairman Craig Massey, a serial entrepreneur who uh, founded Last Second Tickets, acquired by uh, Monetize for uh, £12.3 million uh, pounds in 2014, and uh, Your Keys, acquired by um, Zoopla earlier this year. Among others, uh, Chief Technical Officer uh, Robin Coase, co-founder and CEO of uh, blockchain uh, conglomerate uh, Vianex, um, the coup, which is the uh, chief organizational officer, something like that. Um, uh, Ross Power, a blockchain consultant and uh, product expert, head of entrepreneur engagement. Uh, Richard uh, Richard Bose, an expert PR hand and expert in BSV technology, as well as a uh, cohorts um, advisor, Max Kelly. Thought I was going to say Max Kaiser. Eh? <laughs> uh, the former CEO of Techstars UK and Virgin Insight. Wow. Big names there. Loving that. A lot of money in there too. Great stuff. Uh, applicants to the Satoshi Block Dojo are required to uh, present an idea to be built on the BSV blockchain. The only blockchain that scales unbounded to support enterprise-grade applications and services with no default block cap size on its blockchain. The BSV network offers high transactions throughput, diverse data functionality and predictably low fees. The launch of Satoshi Block Dojo will be accelerated with a launch event at uh, the FORA in London on August 25th and will feature talks from uh, Enchain Chief Scientist Dr. Craig S. Wright, excellent stuff, and a Bitcoin Association Managing Director uh, Patrick Prince. Uh, the event is open to developers, entrepreneurs and, uh, and investors uh, to uh, respond a civu play or email. Great stuff. 
Speaking on today's announcement, uh, Satoshi Block Dojo Chairman Craig Massey said, it's fantastic that after an extended uh, planning period, the Satoshi Block Dojo has come to life. The only thing missing now is our first entrance into the dojo. I'm confident that our hands-on approach in uh, contrast to most venture capital funds and startup accelerators will prove to be a unique point of difference as we collectively work to develop all types of new businesses that are uh, early entrance in leveraging BSV blockchain technology. Uh, also, commenting, also commenting, Satoshi uh, Block Dojo CTO uh, Robin Coase said, I'm looking forward to getting to work with the first cohort of companies to enter the dojo. The key to the dojo approach is ensuring that each startup that enters the program can uh, overcome technical challenges that businesses face from concept to uh, creation. Uh, which Vianex will be uh, supporting with its blockchain infrastructure and uh, Satolearn platform. That combination of hands-on support and technical competence makes the uh, Satoshi Block Dojo an ideal choice for entrepreneurs from, from all walks of life. Whether they are blockchain beginners or experts, a, uh, f um, a factor reflected in our uh, selection guidelines and, supported team, and support teams. Uh, also speaking, Satoshi Block Dojo Head of Entrepreneur Engagement Richard Bose said, At Satoshi Block Dojo, we firmly believe that the proof-of-work ethos prevalent in BSV culture is a critical element to the uh, future success of the ecosystem and the businesses that, com uh, com um, uh, that comprise it. We are extremely excited about welcoming our first companies into the dojo and would encourage anybody with a good idea or innovative uh, take on blockchain technology to join our launch event, apply to join the dojo and be part of the future of the BS uh, of business with BSV. To apply, to, find, uh, to apply or find out more about Satoshi Block Dojo, visit uh, blockdojo.io. Loving the name of that. Love the name of it. It's a great one. So about Satoshi Block Dojo, the mission of Satoshi Block, Do <coughs> Satoshi Block Dojo is to nurture and support startups that will change the world. This means providing a pathway to educate, train and elevate startup entrepreneurs to the highest standards by providing best in class mentors and teaching with the latest tech tools. The Block Dojo is the first startup accelerator focused exclusively on Bitcoin SV. It mentors and develops entrepreneurs and startup businesses, as well as taking care of the administrative hassle of getting a great idea off the ground, so that founders can focus on bringing their tech solutions to market. Absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. Love what I'm reading there. Um, yeah, we're going to have to find a good, uh, good thumbnail for that one. Awesome. So let's go across to our uh, uh, alternative uh, protocol uh, propaganda website. Talking absolute crap as they do. Let's see what's going on here. All the shit coining. <laughs> uh, Hot July at Christie's. Over 93 million in NFT sales and Art Tech Summit. All these people are going to lose everything. Because these tokens are uh, tokens on the blockchain. And the blockchain cannot economically sustain itself. Literally, the, the, the entire world is going to be flooding into the only protocol that has any fundamental value, which is BSV. They're going to lose everything. I mean, they've got more money than cents. You know, if you're going to spend 93 million on NFT sales, I mean, jeepers. Uh, Fed governor says uh, CBDCs remain a solution in search of a problem. Uh, Invesco files with SEC for Bitcoin ETF without direct B2C exposure. These people are so deluded. They're just down the wrong path. Uh, tracking sperm on Bitcoin with egg chain. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, everything's going to be on chain anyway. Uh, crypto analyst firm Mazari concludes a $21 million Series A led by uh, 0.72 Ventures. $21 million again. Down, down, down the waste bin. Down the drain. Down the swanee, as they say. Oh, my goodness me. This video game platform offers token earnings by uh, racing NFTs. I wonder if that's like crypto fights. Again, they'll be, they'll be moving on to the uh, BSV blockchain. Uh, Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong says, um, uh, proposed uh, crypto tax rules make no sense. Whatever, mate. I'm not interested in anything you say whatsoever. Civil uh, civil engagement and Crypto Miami unveils its own digital coin. Oh, dear. Massive fail. I mean, these people, you know, they are so lost. They are literally not going to understand what's happened. Uh, literally, they, they they won't have a clue. Um, it's going to be really bad. Really bad. You know? I mean, uh, I'll tell you what. I've been going for 25 minutes anyway. Um, uh, yeah. Tell you what we do then. Just to finish off, as this is a classic. Um, yeah, we will uh, we'll play 
um, the uh, the full video of um, douchebags of Bitcoin of uh, David Schwartz, who is the uh, the chief technical officer at, uh, at Ripple Labs, uh, basically explaining that um, uh, XRP is a, is an illegal security offering, and then we'll play Vitalik Buterin um, basically explaining the same on uh, on his own blockchain. Like, oh my goodness me! Here we go. First picture up. That's that one. That's David Schwartz, and this is uh, this is Vitalik. Well worth a listen to. I mean, jeepers. Let's find you. Where are you? No, you're hit. Here we go. Check it out. Ha! <laughs> right. David Schwartz. Would you believe it? Right, here we go. Let's find these. Show videos. Uh, yeah, we'll have. We'll definitely play uh, David Schwartz. Just, here he goes. Right. Uh, feast your ears on this. Pleasure to have you, David. All right, so I was hoping you could comment perhaps briefly on this piece of news out this morning. Is Ripple hoping to find evidence that XRP is similar to Bitcoin and Ether and should not be considered a security? Yeah, I, I think the, the primary argument that we're trying to make here is that um, the market considers them similar, we considered them similar, all of the evidence suggested that they were similar, and then the SEC just, you know, comes out of nowhere and say, nope, 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 they're completely different. Ripple's a company, you know, we're based in San Francisco, we have employees, we have shareholders, we have a CEO, I work for that company, I'm the chief technology officer, and it's it's a company like any other company, it's centralized, you know, what the CEO says goes, the board, there's a board of directors, it just works like any other company. Uh, the XR, XRP is a digital asset, it's censorship resistant, it's publicly traded, it trades on the XRP ledger, Ripple does not own or control the XRP ledger in any way. So how did Ripple then get all the XRP that it has? It has about half the supply. So uh, just how, how, did, how did that particular uh, transaction happen? The XRP ledger has a very different design from what Bitcoin and Ethereum have and, and many other digital assets. Like in Bitcoin, the stake, the, the stakeholders uh, are at least to some extent the miners and the miners like reap the rewards of the transaction fees. The XRP ledger doesn't work that way. It is not competitive. Nobody's competing to reap fees because it's not a competitive system. It doesn't have any way to sort of award fees to a particular party because although if it had a way to award fees to particular parties, people would compete for those fees and it would become competitive. So the way it's designed design works is when the ledger first began operation, the 100 billion XRP, all that will ever exist, were sort of up for grabs. And lots of people grabbed XRP out of that system. But it just so happens that obviously, just like early miners mined, you know, huge amounts of Bitcoin before the public knew about it or was using it, uh, early XRP users grabbed large amounts of that pool of XRP. And so uh, the people who developed the ledger wound up with, a, 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 you know, a, um, the vast majority of it and then have been distributing it since then. <laughs> I mean, that is just absolutely insane. Uh, you know, it's it's not a competitive system. If it's not a competitive system, it is a centralized system. That's why there is no competition in it. That's why there's no way to uh, reap fees or anything like that. It's completely centralized because it's a security offering. And they're saying that they grabbed it. Honestly, it's it's absolutely insane when you actually truly understand what, what he's talking about there. Uh, and now we'll have uh, Vitalik Buterin basically saying the same thing about Ethereum. It is an illegal security offering. It's absolutely crazy. So uh, let me just find this video and uh, we'll play this and have a laugh at it. Here we go. Just uh, opening up my, my YouTube channel. Loving this. Right. Here we go. Take the floor, Vitalik. Uh, we we had been hoping to la to launch our our presale on February first, so this is the the way to get it to get into Ethereum finan financially financially, which would be that we would be selling Ether at at a rate of two of two thousand Ether for one Bitcoin, and Ether would be would become the the internal currency of the of the Ethereum network. So you would be able to you. 
so Ether be like the, like the BTC in Bitcoin or, or like the XRP in Ripple. It's sort of the glue that holds the system together. If he, needs a, if he wants to run a contract, you would have to pay transa- transaction fees de- denominated in Ether. It, and if you want to exchange, exchange between two different assets on the Ethereum network, ch- chances are Ether would be the, the, inter- the intermediate th- currency that you would be doing it through. So it's sort of like the, res- the reserve currency of the network. Now, so that would, so the up, so the way that you, so we were hoping to launch the sale where you where you would be able to buy, to buy ether for Bitcoin. We had to delay that for uh, a combination of reasons, partially in order to better flesh out our flesh out the business plan, partially in order to better uh, better flesh out flesh out the terms, partially for for legal reasons. So we have. Uh, and we have been working hard at all those things all the way through fe- February and, and the first week of March. So from an organizational standpoint, our current situation is that we have an, an entity registered in Switzerland. And the reason why we're looking at Swi- Switzerland as a jurisdiction is because, first of all, we Switzerland is very well known for its uh, very, very f- friendly banking laws. It's uh, much easier to do any anything related to innovative finance in Switzerland than it is in something like the United States or even Canada. Another country we were looking at was was Panama, which has some similar properties, but we decided that Switzerland is likely to be more stable. You, you just described some crypto as securities. Which ones do you think of as securities? It's pretty clear, and the Supreme Court has actually spoken about this many times, um, if, if somebody is raising money, selling a token, start the Ether presale mm-hmm. in a couple of weeks. So the Ether presale will be an opportunity for anyone to purchase Ether. Or Ether is the internal currency inside of the Ethereum system, sort of like okay. the XRP and Ripple. And the buyer is, is anticipating pro- profits. What we're hoping is, is that sort of similar to what happened with MasterCoin, if that slice is something, is something like 20%, and then the value of Ether goes up by five, then we basically have the, the entire init- initial BTC that we got all over again. Based on the efforts of that group. It's about 100 people that are working on Ethereum right now. Myself while uh, leading the, yeah, the, the protocol design. And we also have branding teams. We have marketing teams. That fits into something that's a security. Partially in order to better flesh out, our, flesh out the business plan. Partially in order to better, uh, better flesh out, flesh out the terms. Partially for for legal reasons. And there we go. I mean, two of the biggest cryptocurrencies, blatant securities, blatant securities. These shit corners have no idea what's coming. You know, like I almost like I, said, I almost had like a little bit of a panic attack this afternoon because. The, t- the time the time is nigh, as they say. You know, so many people are going to get hurt by this. Whew, you know, um, but best thing you can do, just keep your friends and your family safe. You know, uh, so long as you know what's going on, that's the, that's the main thing. So uh, let's time for Ding-A-Dong. Shout out to uh, Shelly Mack and Connor G in the chat box. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, let's get those handles and paymails in the chat box. Let's do this rock and roll. It is time for dinging of the dong. So it's uh, Shelly, you're going to be first. So SH, that normally comes up with. SHE even. There we go. Tartarian. Excellent. Swiping to send on the way to you. Excellent. And Connor G and anybody else, put uh, handles and paymails in there and stuff if you lift, if you are listening. There we go. C O N. Connor G. Got it. Swiping to send on the way. There we go. We'll give eight seconds to anybody else. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and we're done. Rock and roll. So I hope you enjoyed the show. And as ever, be aware, take care, stay safe for there. Joy giving. Catch you guys later. Get paid for posting your pics on Relica. Download the app now at www.getrelica.com. Get your tweet etched on Twitch. Forever on the Bitcoin blockchain. Do it today at www.jointwitch.com. Buy BSV.live, the best place to buy Bitcoin SV online. Support independent content creators on micropayment platforms such as Streamanity, Twitch, and Relica. We should profit from our data 
nor the large corporations who track, monitor and sell it. If you enjoy the Bitcoin content that I produce, please support me by heading over to www.satoshi.tv where you can keep up to date with all the latest news, gossip and content as it's created. Thanks very much. To get started in Bitcoin, go to freebsv.com where you can claim your free Bitcoin. Then head over to Twitter and follow at IamZatoshi where you can take part in his very generous and world famous free giveaways. The future of advertising meets the power of Bitcoin at Tonic Pow. Get paid for posting advertising campaigns to your social media profiles. Go to www.tonicpowerads.com.